Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I hope everybody is doing well. And my name is Bobby Wibowo, one of the English Ministries pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church. This evening, I would like to share with you God's words from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. But before that, let us pray together. Father God, we thank you for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness, your kindness, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you never leave us. You never forsake us. And we are here because of your grace. This time, Lord, speak to us. Be with us. Strengthen us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, this evening, I would like to speak to you from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. Let us read it together. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven, or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not show so, and he who regards the cloud will not reap. As you do not know the way, the spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child. So you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Well, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by a guy by the name of Solomon. He was a king. He was the son of King David and a really wise king, full of wisdom. And this book, according to tradition, it might have been written during the time where King Solomon was a little bit older. Whereas the book of Proverbs was written when he was a bit younger. The book of Ecclesiastes contains a lot of wisdom. And especially, it is written from the perspective of an older person who has lived through life, who has gone through a lot of things in life, the good and the bad, and who has seen the goodness of the Lord. This evening, perhaps you are thinking about the past few years. Perhaps you are an older person. You look back at the last few decades, of the good things and the bad things that has happened. But perhaps you're a young person. You look back and you're seeing all the things that happened in the past. And the last few years, the things that had happened, whether they might be good or bad. But one thing is certain. God wants us to be a responsible human being in this world. A responsible son, responsible daughter who takes care of the things that he has entrusted us with. Perhaps you say, I don't have much to take care of. Or perhaps you say, wow, I, have, I feel like I have more than what I could handle. Whatever the thing might be, always know one thing. If you are faithful with little things, our Lord Jesus will definitely entrust you with greater things. Today's sermon I have chosen the title as being preparing for tomorrow. How many of us often think about tomorrow? And as we think, we might say, wow, I think tomorrow is going to be a great day. Or tomorrow I think is going to be a bad day. But let us be God's sons and daughters who look, would look at tomorrow and not worry. When we take a look at tomorrow, one thing we would like to do is that we would take a look at it and we can say, I will do my best to prepare for tomorrow. Today, I'll do all that I can. And I will surrender to God the things that I cannot take care of on my own. Things that I can't take care of in the future. Because none of us can do a time jump to good in the future. But while we are here, we can do all the preparation necessary to make sure that tomorrow will be a better day than it was today. So, the book of Ecclesiastes, it's teaching us one thing, which is we have to fear God. 
The word fear doesn't mean like we are scared that God, so scared that we cannot communicate. But the word fear means that we have awe and reference towards God. Number one thing that we can learn from Ecclesiastes chapter 11 is to invest. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 says, but div in New Living Translations, it says, but divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risks might lie ahead. Divide your investments among many places. Perhaps you're getting a paycheck every two weeks and you feel, well, I don't even feel that I have enough. Um, I'm, just, I'm just barely making it or I'm making it just enough and I don't think I can invest. My brothers and my sisters, one thing that you can do is to be faithful. You get your paycheck, you give 10% tithing to the Lord. You take care of perhaps mortgage, rent, or if your house is paid off, take care of um, the taxes, save up bit by bit for the yearly taxes. Or perhaps you think, oh, you know what? Um, I don't have to pay rent. I'm living with my family, with my parents. It's fine too. What you can do is you can make sure that a portion of that in income you would save and a portion you would invest perhaps in the stocks, perhaps in your yearly IRA, individual retirement account, whatever it might be. But one thing that we must definitely do is to invest. And we shouldn't just invest our money and that's it. We have to invest our time. If you are a father, invest your time with your children. You can't just pour out money for your kids thinking, I will just work so hard, give my children money, send them to college, to the best college, and not spend time with them. Personally, I can't say that I agree with parents who just send their kids when they're so young to go out of the country, to, to a foreign country, to go and study there, leaving them there for months at a time. Yes, if the kids out of high school, then that's a different story. But a little young child needs your guidance. Fathers, your daughters need you. Your sons need you. Perhaps if you're a mother, never belittle the amount of investment of time that you can give to your sons and daughters. Perhaps you say, I'm a stay-home mom. Am I really making a difference? Let me tell you. Yes, the time you spend with your children is very important. It is also one of the things that we can do to invest. We can invest on our own future as well. How? By perhaps taking classes, taking a new language class, perhaps taking a, a class that will earn you a skill, a computer class maybe, maybe a photography class, a business class, whatever that you can do to sharpen yourself, to make yourself be more marketable, to make yourself be more skillful. Every day we learn something new and every day we can invest bit by bit by bit for the future, for our family members and also for our own lives as well. Verse four in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, the NLT version says this, Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. If a farmer or a business person would just always consider looking at the situation and they always consider, wow, this is going wrong, that is going wrong, this isn't going to work, that's not going to work. They find all the reasons why uh, that their product will not work or their effort will not work then they'll never make a move. Of course, I agree with great planning, looking at the situation of the economy, thinking when I should market this thing, what I should do next, uh, when I should not do something, when I should hold back, when I should pour in more into the investment. But the point of the matter is, a person who never makes a move, who's always afraid, will not go far. And if they watch every cloud, the second part of this verse says, they never harvest. There's a moment in time where we just have to snatch the opportunity that is in front of us. 
pray about it. Ask the Lord, Lord God, if this opportunity is from you, may you open the doors. If not, may you close the doors. Verse 6 says this, Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. Morning and afternoon, it means that when we do our best at work, at our business, in our lives, in our investments, in our ministry even, don't just keep going all day long neglecting your health, not taking care of your health, thinking, yeah, I have to do better, I, I will do my best, I will pour 110%, and when things get better, then, or when things are in a position where I felt it's really good enough, then, and only then, will I spend more time with my family, then I will have a checkup to check and make sure my body is all right. My brothers and my sisters, once, a day is gone. It can never come back. We can never turn back the time. I wish we could just turn back our clock or our watch or fix time on our phone and go back to a certain moment in life. But that's not the case in this world. God has made it, made it such as that in that once a day is gone, it's gone forever. So, your child is only a small baby once, meaning only for a period of time. Your children are only a toddler, a teenager, just once for a period of time. So, let's make the best out of what we have. Let us make sure that we can take care of time to invest in different places and to make sure that we take time to rest we take time to take care of our family we take time to be there for the people that we love we take time to stop and count the blessings that the lord has given yes we would like to do more yes we would like to be more successful but never forget you are where you are right now because of the blessings of the lord when you're thankful and grateful you are closer to the miracle that you're waiting for. How is it true? When we take a look at Jesus, when we f he fed over 5,000 people, what did he do? Before performing the miracles, he had given thanks. He had said a blessing, and then by the five loaves of bread and two fish, he made it more than enough for thousands and thousands of people. Well, the second thing that I would like to share from the book of Ecclesiastes, and it's supported by Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13, is chapter 11, verse 6 itself. Plant your seeds in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. The book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 13 says this, The lazy person claims, there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. Isn't it funny that that verse was repeated again, very similarly, in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 13. The ESV version says this, The sluggard says, There's a lion in the road, there's a lion in the streets. Well, my brothers and my sisters, the NLT and the ESV versions that I used, you know, really reminds us one thing, the lion it says about the lion, uh, the, the lazy person would just say, hey, there's a lion. It's talking about the fact that when the lazy person wants to do something, they would always find a reason not to do it. When they want to do something, when they want to achieve something, or perhaps when they know they should do a certain thing, they can always find a reason not to. So let's not be that kind of person. Maybe you're a student. Maybe you're out of high school. Maybe you're feeling, I have so much things going on. I have this problem in my life, family problem, issues, this and that. Um, feeling that this is too much. I don't think I can continue um, working or I, I don't think um, I'm, I'm just going to go to school next time. I'm going to go to um, work when I find the right work to do, when, when I can find the right job to do. 
well, my brothers and sisters, why don't you just do your best with what you have? Of course, to make sure that you're being treated fairly, take care of your health, take care of your situation, take care of your family as well, and take care of your education well, and to also make sure that we don't just try to find reasons after reasons to complain. Always be thankful and always refuse to be lazy. Be diligent, amen? Our Lord Jesus Christ was also a very diligent person. He kept going. He knew when to rest. He knew when to pray. He knew when to sit down and eat and enjoy his time with his loved ones. He knew when to minister. And when he ministers, he ministers really he, with all of his heart. Basically, he gave all of himself in every single occasion. And we should learn from that. And the last thing is the third thing. It's the fact that we have to always seek wisdom and guidance from God. A person who had taken care of his investments well or had been given an opportunity to manage the investment of another person in authority and who had done it very well was Joseph. The book of Genesis chapter 41 tells of the story of Joseph, the Hebrew young man who was sold as a slave in Egypt and then rose up to the ranks and became a person who was in charge of Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's high officials. Had, Joseph had been taken uh, into Potiphar's house and was given an opportunity then to take care, to manage the house. He then was framed of something he didn't do. He was put into prison, but even in the prison, he did his best to the point where the person who was in charge of the prison had entrusted Joseph with matters concerning the prison. He was faithful every single time. He was not lazy. He invested his time. And what, he, what had happened was when Pharaoh, the king of Egypt at the time, had, had, he had dreams, what had happened was that no one was able to interpret it, but then Joseph was able to interpret the dreams. Telling Pharaoh, there will come seven years of plenty and seven years of famine in Egypt. He told Pharaoh by God's wisdom, of course, that Pharaoh was to appoint somebody who was capable to take care of um, the matter at hand to take one-fifth or 20%, that is, of the produce of the land to store it up for the years of famine. And what had happened was that Joseph was chosen to be that man. He took care of the matter really well, and he not only was able to make sure that Egypt was taken care of, but also people in other countries were also taken care of, including his family members who then went to Egypt to get grain. Today, how can we apply these principles? How can we apply the principles of investing in different places, of not being lazy to ask wisdom from God, you could put it into practice in your lives with what you have. The money that God has blessed you with, the paychecks, the dividends from your investments, from your business, whatever it might be, do your best with it. Never forget, when you're faithful with little things, God will also be faithful and will give you more things to take care of. If you're a student, study well. Do your best not to get into debt. You can always think that, hey, I can always go to community college for two years, get my associate's degree, work along the way, save up some money, and apply for my bachelor's degree in the university. Most community, college of, community colleges have dual enrollment programs where they'll in the end allow you to be able to attend a university at a better rate than if you would have gone through and do or go through the university all at once from the very beginning. Or if you are a business person, you can take care of your matters well, to document your receipts well, your expenses, to make sure that when it's time to file your taxes, you can have the necessary deductions. Whatever it might be, even perhaps if you feel like I felt like I've done, I haven't done it that well back then. If you felt that you have not done it well in the past, it's not too late. Today, 
you can make better decisions so that our, your future, your family's future will be better than the past. My brothers, my sisters, three things that we learn from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses one to six. One, invest. Two, don't be lazy. Three, ask for wisdom from the Lord. My prayer is, let this message tonight be a blessing to your lives. And if you have never heard the good news before, that Jesus Christ saves, that you can have a new beginning with, with Lord Jesus. You can have a new beginning with God. This evening, I would like to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus into your life. If you're not sure where you will spend eternity, I would like to tell you that if you believe in your, in your heart that God had raised Jesus from the dead, that you believe and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. If you've never prayed this prayer of salvation before to receive Jesus into your hearts, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. And then afterward, find a church, a Bible-based church where you could grow where your faith can grow, when you could be in the community of believers. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, at this moment, I would like to pray for those who never received you, O oh Lord, as their personal saviors. I would like to invite them now to repeat these words, to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and my life. Forgive me of my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. And right now, Lord, I would like to pray for anyone who's listening to this program. May you bless them, bless their lives, strengthen them, Lord. Heal the sick, O oh God. Strengthen those who are in need. And right now, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all that you've done in our lives. In the name of Jesus, God's people say, Amen. God bless you all and see you next time in Good News Internet Broadcasting.